Welcome in Tar Heel Nation. This is the Tar Heel Herald coming at you with the new ACC schedule. We're mostly going to be focusing on North Carolina, but I definitely am going to talk about everybody else, uh, who wins, who loses, and just a few things in between. But first, let's jump into the North Carolina Tar Heel schedule. Uh, you see it on the screen, so if you just follow along with me on the North Carolina one, we start out with Virginia Tech. Now, I'm not going to go into a preview and prediction video yet, but I'll kind of give a little um, analysis of the schedule as a whole, and maybe then each game. Now, if you look at the schedule entirely as a whole, I want to give props to the ACC and its new commissioner. They did well. Every schedule seems pretty even, besides some people just have a heavy non-con schedule. So, honestly, looking at it, you got, it's pretty even throughout. The only time you have an issue is probably it's the middle. I mean, you got, you got Florida State, Miami, by Notre Dame. Wake Forest and Pitt, and then I guess if you want to even conclude in Wofford and NC State, it's kind of the hardest part, but mostly the hardest part is going to be Miami by Notre Dame. That's going to be the two hardest matches on our schedule, and they're back-to-back. -back. Well, they're not back-to-back. -back. There's a bye in between. So even the fact that our two hardest uh, games are going to be cut in between with a bye so but you got virginia tech which is going to be either a thursday or friday game which is you can't look at it as virginia tech being down because and i know they lost Hendon hooker herbert um an offensive lineman who i don't know if he's going to the draft or not or if he got transferred out i just know their best offensive lineman left uh and they're losing their first round cornerback uh, Farley so they're losing a lot they've been on the uh, down they're, they're trending downwards so could be an easy win but knowing North Carolina I assume this is going to be a close win hopefully not a, it, hopefully it's not a hiccup game or anything like that let's just I I truly think this is probably going to be just like every other year where we come out and we escape a close one in the first game. Then you got Georgia State. Should be an easy, easy non-con game there. Then you got Virginia. Now, Virginia, I think, I don't even know if you would consider it a hiccup game. Virginia, first off, Virginia is the only team that's beaten us in both years that Mac has been back. And then second off, Virginia looks a whole lot better. It's probably going to look a whole lot better this year than last year. So we're 0-2 against them. They're coming back stronger this year. Virginia Tech week three could be a challenge for us. Then, of course, you got Georgia Tech and Duke. Georgia Tech and Duke are probably both going to be better than they were last year. How much better? Who knows? Florida State, uh, actually, let's just go ahead and add them into those three. Georgia Tech, Duke, and Florida State, probably all going to be better than last year. How much better? We'll have to see when we come to that week. Uh, but right now, it looks like an easy three-game stretch, but we'll see later on. Then, of course, you got Miami, then Bye, then Notre Dame. So that's going to be a tough schedule, uh, a tough part of the schedule. Then, to end the end the year, we got a nice little um, Wake Forest, Pitt, Wofford, NC State to end the year. Which, for some reason, we also have a Thursday game with Pitt on November 11th. And a Friday game with NC State. So, three non-saturday games for us uh looking through all the other schedules here um the only other team that has 
multiple well actually a few have multiple non-saturday games i guess that's a new thing with the acc looks like everyone seems to have one or zero except a couple have two or three uh i don't know if that's going to be a new thing now but i personally hate non-saturday games but that's just me if it's a holiday thing then fine but you know i work a lot so i, I tend to hate those but that's the um that's our schedule i i i think it's great schedule obviously we pick up notre dame so that's a good good addition and of course wake forest in the non-con game as well and then you got wofford and georgia state so honestly it looks almost exactly identical to last year except we flip-flopped a couple acc teams so look to be around the same strength of schedule except except you're probably going to see the ACC a little bit better than last year. The ACC whilst some teams looked better than they normally do, a lot of teams looked worse than they normally do. So I assume a lot of people are going to be a whole lot better this year, especially like that three three team run that I was talking about, the Georgia Tech, Duke and Florida State. I assume they're all going to be a whole lot better than last year. Which isn't really saying much but we'll just say that but okay let's uh let's honestly or let's get into the winners losers and uh the in-betweens so first who pulled clemson on the coastal side you have pittsburgh and georgia tech then who fin who pulled notre dame four coastal teams and one Atlantic team. The Atlantic team is Florida State. Then all the coastal teams is UNC, Georgia Tech, Virginia, and Virginia Tech. So a little odd there that four coastal teams pulled Notre Dame this year. Maybe by design since Clemson is in the Atlantic. So they want to give more strength to the coastal by adding more Notre Dame uh games into the coastal i'm not sure i didn't really go into the history of it if that's normal or not maybe it's a new thing with the new commissioner we'll see but just pointing that out now i wanted to add this shockingly I, th again I, this may just be the new now i know non-con games are typically scheduled early but I didn't look at how long ago these were scheduled, but let's look at the non-con Power 5. Now, there's a lot of G5 schools, like, um, pretty sure Louisville picked up UCF, I think. Someone, I think it was Louisville picked up UCF, but someone else got USF and um, a couple other good G5 schools were involved, so... A couple of schools got um, some lower G5 schools, but, you know, we picked up some big G5 schools as well. So that's cool. But let's look at all the P5. You got Boston College has Mizzou. You know, great, great evenly matched game there, I would say. You, uh, Georgia and Clemson, great game. Louisville, Ole Miss, I, great game. NC State, Mississippi State. I mean... All of these matches so far are just pretty even, it looks like. Uh, on paper, they do. And honestly, it continues. you got Syracuse Rutgers, Wake Forest Army, Duke Northwestern. Maybe that's a little one-sided for Northwestern. I'm not going to say they're on Duke's level. Um, Miami, Michigan State, Pitt versus Tennessee, Pitt versus BYU, Virginia Tech, and West Virginia. All of those seem like evenly matched non-conference power five games however you got miami and bama so unfortunately i think that was miami's problem you know they scheduled that so i'm just proud of the acc and their scheduling so far and, they, and it, even if it's the non-con games is obviously scheduled a long time ago from all these teams then fine i mean hats off to all the acc teams that did that so there's really not many winners. Like I said, they evenly scheduled almost everyone. So I really don't have any winners of the schedule, but I do have losers 
who probably got the shaft from their school or the ACC or just a combination of the two. So first, FSU. FSU has Notre Dame to kick off the season. They pulled North Carolina from the Coastal. They pulled Miami from the Coastal. And you still have to play, obviously, everyone in the Atlantic and add Florida at the end of the year and rivalry week. Now, let me just tell you the last five games. Now, North Carolina is in the first five or six, whatever it is. But then the last five games is brutal. You have Clemson, NC State, Miami, Boston College, Florida. Tell me that that is not possibly an 0-5 record right there. I mean, Florida State is not... I think they're going to be better. They got a lot of transfers. They got Mackenzie Milton. They could be great. But we don't know yet. And if they aren't great, that is a horrible way to end the year. I can tell you that. If they're going into this Clemson game with three losses, which they would be three and four, you could see them going three and nine at the end of this. I don't see them, if they look just a little better than last year, I don't see them doing very well. I don't, they may not get to a bowl game. All right. Then you got Louisville, okay? Louisville honestly hurt themselves. I don't know when they schedule these games, but their non-con schedule is obviously they play Kentucky as their rival. So, SEC opponent, Louisville hasn't turned the corner yet. It will be in year two, and they looked great on offense, but their defense was trash. So, Kentucky, going to be a tough match. Ole Miss, tough match in the non-con. You got the P5 game there. And yes, they did pull UCF, so they're going to have to play UCF. They pulled... Who did they pull? They pulled... Um, Let's see, Florida State, Wake Forest, Virginia. Okay, so they pulled Virginia, so that's a tough game. They pulled, who is the other one? I'm not noticing who the other one is. Oh, Duke. Okay, so that's, an, that's a decent pull. Um, but yeah, you got Ole Miss, UCF, Virginia, pulled. Obviously, you got to face Clemson, and then you got Kentucky. So not as bad as Florida State, say that. But still bad. Then you got Miami. Miami did it to himself. They got Alabama, App State, Michigan State. All three non-con games. All three, their first three games in a row. If they come out of that with two wins, props to them. I mean, App, App, you're going to say App State and Michigan State should be easy wins. Sure, if you want to say that. But I'm trying to say to you, two wins out of three and that first th those first three games is a victory to Miami, and I would wear that proudly. But you got... Obviously, you're going to have to face Virginia and North Carolina. North Carolina being the more like tough match here. You got Pitt. Um, and you got Florida. I mean, every the only thing I'm saying really is the losing factor here is those first three games. That's just... The first three games here is just absolutely brutal. And then... The last one is Georgia Tech. And boy, is Georgia Tech going to have a horrible year here. Uh, poor Georgia Tech. I mean, I guess it is the year to be have a tough schedule is year two. Because year two, you don't expect everything. But you also expect a better year than year one. And I assume they're still going to have a better year than year one. It's just going to be tough. I mean, they're facing Clemson. They pulled Clemson. Obviously, they got to face they got to face Georgia as their rivals. They pulled Notre Dame, and they pulled Boston College. So they got Clemson and Boston College from the other division, and then they throw you Clemson, North Carolina, and Pitt three straight games in a row. Then they throw you 
to end the year, all six of these games are in a row. Virginia, Virginia Tech, Miami, Boston College, Notre Dame, Georgia. I mean, that's brutal. That's just brutal. So, again, ACC overall schedule. North Carolina looks great. It sets up well. We only have a few tough matches. Doesn't look like a lot of hiccup games at the moment. The only hiccup games I can see right now, Virginia Tech to start the year, Virginia week three, and then the really only hiccup game, I don't know, Pitt, I guess, to near the end of the year. I'm not going to count a hiccup game. Uh, you know, I, I, I think of a hiccup game as in, like, we're favored, but could be an easy upset. Um, so, yeah, Carolina looks great. A few losers. Most of the losers are because of non-con. Some have some scheduling losses, but, t I mean, honestly, looks great. I, I, I see uh, a lot of great games for next year. So, with that being said, thanks for tuning in. Like, comment, subscribe helps the channel out and thanks for joining in guys